in scoring 70 or more. One in five when they score less than 70. Well, it's hard pace to hit 70. Yeah, so. it's hard for any team to to get to 70 when you're shooting under 30 percent. Utah State at 29, and, and Idaho shooting at 41. Aggies are 1 and 0 when they are tied at halftime. Madison down the lane puts it up and scores, and just like that, Vandals have the lead to start the second half. It's a good way to start to get to that 70. You know, too easy. Madison going high, going to the middle of the floor. You draw a line right down the middle of the floor. They're giving him the middle of the floor. Butterfield just pulling his way, hitting over Connor Hill. He now has 10 points. Butterfield the JC transfer. He's got a little more experience when you look at between him and Hill. Hill just the sophomore. But boy, the strength of Butterfield. That's one facet of his game is he's very strong and physical. Trying to go to Barone, turning it over, but Barone somehow got it back from Shaw. And it'll be a held ball. It'll be Utah State basketball. Coach Morrill says, hang on to it, hang on to it. Speaking to Jared Shaw. Yeah, the hands of Shaw. I mean, as soon as he improves a little bit on his footwork and his hands, he's going to be very dangerous. And he's got a year. you got to remember, he has never played Division one basketball. You know, he played a little bit at Oklahoma State, but it was so minimal. And then he sat out for the year. He hasn't had a lot of experience. It's taken him a while to get going. Davis with a jumper. He now has seven points. Penetration to the elbow. You give him that shot, he's going to knock it down. We mentioned he was in out first one out on the court today, practicing that elbow jumper, getting his shot, getting his rhythm. Hill off the curl, and he hits it again. 12 my, points now for Connor. One of my favorite plays in basketball. You get a good screen for a shooter coming off right at the elbow, right there at the junction where the foul line and the key meet. A great 15-foot jump shot, high percentage shot. You give a shooter that shot, he'll take it nine out of ten times. Here's Jared Shaw. Tough shot, fading away. And Vandals come up with it, but they turn it over. So a game with very few turnovers and low shooting starts off with teams on fire and turning the ball over. <laughs> Good halftime adjustments, huh? He can't be at half. You have possession. Shut up, Dunn. Now what are they going to discuss here? Coach. Clock again, perhaps. We had a couple issues on Thursday with the clock. Here is Davis. Butterfield from downtown. A Christian with the rebound. Pushing. Here's Douglas looking inside to Barone. Trying to get the lob into Barone. You wonder how aggressive Barone will be in the second half here. And Connor Hill's got your hot hand, but you can't go away from Barone, your big man. Well, that's Idaho's best player. Here's McChristian getting inside. Here is Barone. And he walked with it. So the fourth Vandal turnover now, two in the second half. That's as many as they had in the entire first half. You, you've got to believe that Coach Morrill challenged them to be physical. Because right there you see Jared Shaw was much more physical with Barone and forced Barone to lean into him and travel. Kind of lost his balance. There's Medlin. Gets in the lane, was fouled by McChristian. I think this is a nice tactic. Yeah, McChristian can't keep up with Medlin off a screen. It reminds you of back in the days with J.C. Carroll. They'd have that kid, just high motor guy, running nonstop, coming off. And that's what that's what Medlin brings you, high motor. You close out high, he gets through the screen. You don't get help side through the screen. He's got to step on you. He's going to take you to the hole. Makes good on the first. Preston having a difficult time shooting from the floor. Brooks, he's just one for eight. Boy, this is the WAC preseason player of the year that's had some really good games as of late. Coming off an 18-point performance, and he scores 24 at UTSA and 21 at Texas State. So the last couple games, he's he's right at he's at above a 20-point average. So just one field goal, but because he's gone to the line and made his free throws, he's got five. As Hill lost it going up, somehow trickles to McChristian who scores. It looks like Utah State had an easy break. Somehow the ball found its way into the. Fingertips of McChristian. Yeah, Medlin was streaking the floor. What would have been a nice little two-hand slam from what we've seen in the past. But the ball just bounced right into the Vandals. Tied at 36. Preston again with the drive. Sets up Butterfield. Too strong. Reed up there. Shaw now comes up with it. 
And they're going to count the buckets? Well, I think they're getting a foul on McChristian. The foul's going to no, the foul's going to go on Barone. Barone. And they're saying baskets good. Oh, excuse me. I thought the foul was going to be on McChristian pulling down Keyshawn. Watch straight. Keyshawn comes down, or excuse me, that's Madsen. And there's Barone. Mm. Nothing there, and then he comes down with anything. I thought that probably should have been a jump ball, but somehow the Aggies get a break there. And Shaw makes good at the line. Shaw shoot. He shoots 72% from the free throw line. He started off just on fire from the free throw line. Showed us his ability to knock down that 15-foot jumper, but kind of went cold a little while. Here's Douglas. I don't know if he was contacted, but they're going to say an and one here for Denzel Douglas. Three on three on Keyshaw. Oh, excuse me, there goes the shot. It's going to be three on Shaw. But you see, Douglas, he got the start in the second half. You remember Robert Harris got the start of the game. Come out with Denzel Douglas. Douglas just a strong little point guard. And Marcel gambled. He gambled for the pass, was un unable to be in any type of possession defensively. Douglas had five points and five rebounds in the win against the Spartans on Thursday. Tied at 39. So evenly matched these two programs. Up and down. Hard physical play. Here's Medlin. So they can get him going with some field goals. Sometimes you can get on track shooting wise if you knock a couple down from the line and that's what he's been able to do. They're shot. Doubled. Somebody's got to be open. Medlin, deep three. Back iron. Davis battles for it. It's Douglas. Medlin back defensively, and Madison throws it down. Vandals by two. Boy, how about Madison running the floor with the flush? Great job by Douglas with the dish. You know, you've got a three-on-one break. You've got to take advantage and finish those. Davis on the drive. Well, beautiful positioning by Marcel Davis now with nine. He's a tremendous penetrating point guard, Michael. He has an ability to get in the lane. A very fast first step. He keeps his head up. He waits for defenders to commit and blows by him. Madison again misses the three. He's been off this season from downtown. Davis again with the drive. Finishes again. Marcel Davis. Back-to-back -back buckets, and the Aggies lead by two. I see when the lane opens up, early offense, if it's there, take it. He's got Douglas on his heels. You've got to go after it and take advantage. The herd making some noise with 15, 17 left. Aggies on top by two. We'll return to the spectrum in a moment. Spectrum, 43-41, Aggies leading by two. It's been a very tough, rough physical game. 14 ties, eight lead changes. Utah State, they're 12-1. They're trying to go 4-0 in conference play. This is what's coming up. They've got the Spartans here on Friday, which you will see here on KMYU, at New Mexico State, at Denver, pretty good program, UT Arlington, and then La Tech. They've been playing well to start conference play. Yeah, and of their next games, you'll be able to catch a lot of them on KMYU. You'll also be able to catch the New Mexico State game, their Las Cruces on KMYU, and then the final two home games in January. Here's Marcus Bell inside. Has not played a lot, but able to score over Reed, and we're tied at 43. That Bell average is about 2.8 or 2.8 points per game. I like his aggressiveness. Going at Keyshawn. Keyshawn's got two fouls. You know they're going to try and go at it. Davis has been the hot man so far for the Aggies. Able to draw the foul on Robert Harris. That's Harris's fourth foul. That's probably why they didn't start him in the second half. Is he had three to, in the first half, and that's four. That's going to put him right back on the bench. Junior out of Kent, Washington, a JC transfer from Eastern Arizona. Tied again, this time at 43. 14.35 left. H. Miller drive of the game, and it's Spencer Butterfield. Well, I love the, the aggressiveness. He did it in the first half, and he did it again in the second half. The, the lane opened up. 
right there, Mansa Habib, trying to close out too high, trying to take away middle. And you gotta be careful. You do not want your defender to beat your middle, but you gotta beat him to the baseline. 10 rebounds for Jared Sean. He's got four offensive and six defensive. How about the rebounding? Utah State seven in the second half to two for Idaho in the second half. He's been tracking that very closely. Aggies number one in the whack. And rebounding margin, here is Reed, misses. Habib. Hill, again, that quick trigger, misses everything. Davis comes up with it. Looking up court, gets it to Medlin. Medlin on the drive, leaves it for Reed. Reed was fouled. That was Bell. Bell came at him hard. No good idea for Marcel to get the ball up fast. Preston gets a little too deep on the baseline and a nice, sucks the defenders. The penetration once again, Michael. You take a look, watch him draw the defenders. There comes Bell over, kick it right over to Keyshawn. And Bell just goes up with two hands right across the face of Keyshawn. Wow, physical. Bell is 6'8", 220, the junior. Out of Modesto, California, went to Marshalltown Community College. Reed coming off that double-double performance on Thursday. I wonder if Idaho preparing for Utah State, if they had tackling dummies at practice. You got to believe the, the game plan to face Utah State is you look at their other weaknesses that they've talked about as being physical. Their big guy's got to be physical. I think that Shaw, or excuse me, Reed's really stepped up to the challenge to be physical, and they'd love to see Shaw do it. And, and he's getting much better. I wonder, prepare for that. You got to be physical with them. Bring out some practice, or some practice dummies. So similar, kind of talked about it. Obviously, Coach Verlund spent 15 years with Stu Moore. So you know there's going to be some similarities. Sounds like they're having some type of clock malfunction. You see Stu walk all the way to half court and wave it down. And Coach Verlund gets a big old grin on his face. Both laughing. I got a really Everybody has Stu's smiles on their faces. <laughs> Which early wine had a smile on his face. Curious what was said there. 14.09 on the clock is Reed. They're still smiling on the bench. <laughs> Must have been a nice one-liner. Reed now the uh, leading scorer for Utah State with 12 points. It's been a game of runs. As soon as the Aggies get the lead, Idaho's had an answer. 15 ties, eight lead changes. You know, Douglas has really had to step up with Harris in foul trouble. Hill. Here's Barone. Stone on him defensively. Good matchup. Barone misses. Got it back. Should be a held ball. Tremendous defense, Michael. Tremendous defense. Barone's going to finish. He's a great player, but I thought Stone did a good job of keeping him in front and making him shoot over you rather than through you. But right here, high side, taking it away. Goes up, contests the shot, gets a hand on the ball. Just got to turn the box out and get that rebound. That's the rebound. You've earned it. You got to go get it. You play good defense. You got to be rewarded. Do the last second thing, which was turn the box out. 12 and a half to play. Second half. Habib. Camera with the shot. Did that go glass? Well, just somehow that made it. Far iron. You know, he's on the baseline, hit the far iron. And Able to get it to go. Nice little dish off. The big man showing his range from 15 feet out. Here's the lob. Too tall again for Reed. Second time they've tried the lob. Last time it was in the first half and an inbounds pass. Well, that's a lob that works. But, but you see what Idaho's doing to take it away is Connor Hill, the one that's defending the screener. He's chipping Keyshawn to slow him down. Disrupt the rhythm. So it kind of caused Medlin to double check and then when he fired the clutch, double clutch, and as soon as he made the passes, just way too high. Even Keyshawn can't grab that one. Just the third Utah State turnover. Inside 13 minutes to play. Madison. The Christian. Here's Douglas. Douglas again. Inside the big Joe scores against Reed. Another pick and roll. They got the guards coming off screens, coming hard off the ball, pick and roll. We saw it with Barone earlier. This time they 
uh, incorporate Joe Kemmerer. Now with four points, missing on the drive. Madison's calling for it. Douglas again going to reset the offense. Two-point Vandal lead. Back outside, Madison again. This time he connects. He's had a difficult time from the outside, but it's only a moment of time before a guy like Madison able to starts to hit some of those threes. You know, he's a three-point shooter. He's a threat, but he, you mentioned, had a difficult time. Coming into the game, he's only shooting 21%. That's the first made three that he's had tonight. Gives the Vandals a five-point lead. Both coaches obviously familiar with each other, but they're coaching hard in this game. No question about it. <laughs> well, you've got you've got the mentor, and you've got the student, and and you know that they they know each other's system, and they're good friends. They're good friends, and and I'll tell you what, if you go talk to Berlin, he's going to tell you that he. He appreciates everything that he's learned from Coach Morrow. This is a game that I'm sure they don't look forward to, but they've got a plan. Still calls him Coach LaTeX, able to squeak by UT Arlington, which not a very good start to whack play. And then Texas State losing again. Seattle, one point lead over San Jose State, but still early first. And Texas San Antonio, Denver yet to tip yet. Five point vandal advantage, Aggies with the ball. First shot, doubled back outside. Gene, Reed lost it, out of bounds. It'll be Vandal basketball. They're saying off Marcel Davis. I thought they were gonna get Marcel with a foul and knock Douglas out of bounds. Another good defensive stand coming from Idaho. They're taking away the three-pointers. 11.36 remaining, and it's the Vandals by five. 50th meeting all time between Idaho and Utah State. Vandals lead 50 to 45. How about our Salt Lake Express delivery of the game? Boy, a nice little pass. That was early going in this ball game, coming from Butterfinger, or excuse me, Butterfield into Reed. There is Spencer Butterfield, another solid performance. That must be craving a tasty candy bar. <laughs> I'm talking about Butterfingers. Butterfield with 10 points, a couple of rebounds, a couple of assists. Madison in the lane, back outside. Habib, foot was on the line. Another offensive rebound. But Christian gets it to Madison again. Gene steps in front of that pass. Five turnovers now committed on Idaho. Here's Shaw! Chance for a three-point play. You know, I, I credit the, the start of that play coming from Marvin Jean. The active hands defensively in the zone, knock the ball loose, and, and then you get it to Davis. Right here, watch Davis. As soon as he catches, he looks up. He knows he's got Shaw. He waits for the defender, Douglas, to turn around, and then Jared Shaw goes up to finish this and gets an and one opportunity. Great job coming from Marcel Davis. His head is always looking up court. That's what you want out of your point guard. Shaw makes the free throw now with eight points on three of six shooting as Barone checks back into the ball game. Big uh, points that time for Utah State, trailing by five, and they've cut it to two. Shaw's a basket away from another double-double. He's got those ten boards. Let's we'll see if he can muster up a little defense here on Barone. Match that physicality down low. Christian gives it up to Madison. Madison going to the three spot. They're going to get Cameron with the offensive foul on an illegal screen. See, they've moved, they've moved Madison to a three position because they brought Cameron and Barone in together. And so it's forcing Marvin Jean to guard Madison. They're trying to post him up. They're trying to isolate Madison. Token press by Idaho. Aggies a chance to tie or take the lead with a three. Davis. There's Gene. Shaw has it. Intriguing matchup with Barone. Doesn't get the finish. Barone with the rebound. Much better aggressive move coming from Shaw, though. Those will fall. You got to keep going at it. He was going towards the basket instead of away. He got deep into the lane. 
Douglas swings it to McChristian, and he knocks down another three. The second of the game for McChristian. Back to five. Davis gives it up to Medlin. Boy, Idaho very good at shutting down the lane. I think Utah State's had about two open looks from downtown tonight. One for 11 from downtown. Gene turns it over, looking to go to Marcel Davis. Aggie's fifth turnover. I don't know how many times I've mentioned it in this ball game. This is going to be a dogfight in the second half. The Vandals got the upper hand. Defensively, they've turned up the pressure and not getting any open looks. Utah State still not shooting a high percentage. 9% from downtown, 1 for 11. Under 10 to play. And Coach Verlin calls for a timeout. Wants to talk things over with 9-19 left. Well, this, this team up 5-5. This is a crucial possession for the Vandals. And you call a 30-second timeout to try and rally your troops and see if you can set up an offensive set to get an easy bucket and push the lead out to seven. Utah State women's basketball will host their next home game on Thursday, January 17th. The Aggie women will take on New Mexico State here at the Spectrum at 7 p.m. Single game tickets are available for $5 for adults, a dollar for youth. For more information, call 1-888-U-STATE-1 or order online at utahstateaggies.com. Talked about how the women beat Idaho earlier, overcoming a couple deficits, one as much as 16 points. And Devin Christensen, another fantastic performance. If you like to see shooters, you come to the women's basketball game because they've got a couple of gals that can shoot it from long distance and they, they're not afraid to pull the trigger. Good to see Jen Schlott playing yes. very well too. As a uh, great young point guard for, for Coach Finkbeiner. The Aggies into a zone now. Shot clock down to four. Madsen pulls the trigger. Boy, did you see how high Shaw got for that rebound? Boy, his elbows were at the rim. Clifford back in the ball game. Solid production in that first hand. Here is Jared Shaw working on Barone. Rolling into the game for Coach Moore. Now, if you're Coach Moore, you're hoping that your men can shoot like the women. If you haven't been out to see those guys shoot the ball, that's what they could use tonight. Oh, how about the drive by Tennille Rowland? Hasn't played a whole lot. Marcel Davis, the starting point guard. But key bucket for Rowland that time. Giving it. You know, you don't lose much when you get when Marcel Davis comes out of the game. I thought that was a great job coming from uh, Roland. The Roland able to draw the foul against Shaw after he got the offensive rebound. Remember at the top of the telecast, we talked about Barone. And one of his highlights, he had about nine opportunities at yes. the rim with, with, against Seattle. And that's exactly what you saw there. The guy never gives up on the basketball. Never hangs his head if he was fouled. If he wasn't, he just keeps going. Only three of eight shooting, but he has eight points and nine rebounds. Now two of four from the line as Butterfield comes in. And I, Bieber. I've seen Bieber, I've seen Kardashian. I've seen Sheldon from that uh, one sitcom series. And there's a chef in the mix too. A, a live chef is Barone. And makes one of two from the line. Tough place to shoot free throws on that end. Well, Bain was also in the house. How about that? The villain from Batman. What a good villain. Thanks to Beavis and Butthead over there. Madison reaches in front. Clifford battles for it. Harris comes up with it. He's in trouble. Clifford trying to tie him up. And it will be a held ball. It'll stay with Utah State. And, you know, the funny thing there is Whoa. Harris is on his keister. He's on his bottom, and he has nowhere to go, and all his teammates ran by him. He's <laughs> like, fellas, help me out. I can't move. 7.53 left. Now look at Kardashian. Idaho by four. Season's sub of the game. Tennille Rowland has only played five minutes, but that was a big bucket. Well, he's played great defense, too. Out on the top of that zone, he forced a couple bad shots. 
And that's a tremendous drive, a great first step. That's been the one right spot as the point guards for Utah State have been able to get into the lane and, and to penetrate. Our four season sub of the game, Daniil Roland. Big possession here for Roland and his Aggies. Now, I didn't see what was called, if they ended up calling a traveling or a jump ball in that last play because the possession arrow never, oh, they're changed, it just changed now. Here's Medlin. Roland. Butterfield. Here's Shaw with a step out. Big time bucket by Jared Shaw now, double figures with 10. He's got 11 boards to go with his 10 points. He's got that double-double. That's a big shot. Let's see if the Aggies can step up to the challenge down the stretch. Here's the screen to watch the pick and roll. Attacking Shaw and able to score was Harris. Well, they got out and showed on the pick and roll and it opened it up for Harris. Harris goes right at Shaw. Shaw's got three fouls, so he's being very tentative in the paint defensively. Harris has been bothered by a hamstring injury. In his Several games due to that hamstring. A couple of big shots against Seattle down the stretch a couple games ago. Here's Reed working on Madison. They're going to bring a double. And Shaw, pardon me, Reed able to draw the foul. And we'll have the free throw line. Madison picks up his second personal. Reed with more free throw attempts than any Aggie coming into tonight's game. And you look at this Utah State team, and once they started whack play, and even this season, they've been better on the road, shot better percentages, and played better on the road than they have in the spectrum, which is odd for a Utah State team, just because they usually play so well in this building. And down in Texas, they shot the lights out in both games, and won convincingly. Now, the talent level that they've had here this year in the spectrum's been a little better, with St. Mary's coming in and Idaho playing well. Seattle even played good down the stretch. Reed, a 63% free throw shooter, makes both. Back to a two-point game. And going back to on the road, that win at Santa Clara. Preston Medlin hits a big shot to send it into overtime. Then they seal the deal there. That's a tough place to go play. Probably Utah State's best win overall this season is that one against Santa Clara. Habib inside. Did not even put it on the floor, just turned around. And Keyshawn shaking up. Keyshawn's got 3,000. You can see the frustration on his face down there. He thought he had the charge or the travel call, but let's take a look. There's Habib. There's Keyshawn. He jumps up with him, so foul is on him. He might have got an elbow right to the jaw. And physical, we've kind of talked about that the entire night. There was pain. <laughs> The distractions, you gotta love it, but Habib able to knock down the free throw. How about Habib now two of seven on the air from the free throw line, only shooting 16%, yes. and he knocks it. down the big one with the guys behind him, the behind the basket. Roll and lost the dribble. Here's Reed. Shaw lost his footing, Reed tips, that doesn't go. Looked like Shaw might have had a chance at a throwdown, but couldn't keep his footing. Hill a big time three. Boy, another three in transition for Hill. That's his second one tonight in transition. He had one in a half court set. And as soon as that ball went up, you could see the hands from Harris go up. He knew it was good. They're just out hustling and controlling the tempo of this game in the second half. Eight point advantage. Big trip here for the Aggies. Need to come up with something. Medlin, only the second made three tonight. Now two of 12 from downtown. That's a big one by Preston, answering the three by Hill. It's a five-point game. This this time Preston was very patient, he, waiting for the dry, or waiting for the screen, waiting for the who or the the lane to open for him to step back and shoot. You take it right there. A big screen coming from Shaw, off the roll. The roll's not there. The defender's not there to show. You can't leave a shooter open. Preston Medlin's eventually going to hurt you. Boy, that's the second made three tonight. You have a feeling that they're going to start falling, but it might be a little too little, a little too late in this contest. Idaho is getting closer to that 70 points. Remember, so proficient when they hit 70 points, and when they don't, not so much. 
Well, Utah State only gives up 62 points a game to their opponents, and so they're, they're that now. Take a look at the screen. There's Barone doesn't step out on this to guard the shooter. Kind of slacks back to defend the roll to Shaw, and Medlin's wide open for the shot. Medlin just two for 10, you now eight points. That was a big one, so five and one when they score 70 or more. One in five when they don't hit 70. So, so unless Idaho goes on a drought right now, things are looking good in their favor. We'll see if Utah State can step up the intensity defensively and get a stop. And then finish on the other end. They've really had a hard time this half. Only 27 points here in the second half. And the large part is they're shooting 16% from three-point range now, two for 12. Big time make, though, by Preston Medlin, your leader. Three-pointing. The corner situation there is Hill again knocks it down. Boy, he has been clutch tonight for the Vandals. Now got 18 points, and that's his other off the screen, a shooter in a half-court set. Seven made Vandal threes. I mentioned get a stop there. I'm able to get a stop. But Midland might try to answer. So we approach five minutes in the second half. Midland on the drive. A whistle and a foul. Medlin again has to be helped off from the floor. Madsen going to be the guilty party here. Hey, take a look right here. Madsen just gets beat. Or excuse me, sliding over for the help side defense. It takes that left arm and just rakes it across Preston. Medlin knocks down the first free throw as Christian comes back in for Habib. Utah State is shooting 94% from the foul line. They've been very good there. See if they can somehow muster some of those in down the stretch. Got them both. Now double figures for Preston Medlin. You know, they're trading threes for twos right now. Idaho's getting really good looks at the basket. Utah State's going to extend that pressure. Look for the trap right off the inbounds. Field goal percentage in the second half. All five Utah State starters in double figures now. Six point Vandal lead. Here's Barone out high. Well, Idaho's going to work clock. He lost it. Oh, a late whistle. A foul is going to be committed by the Aggies. I thought Shaw did much better staying in front. That was good defense. They're saying two shots. Boy, I thought that was on the drive. Good friends there. Moll and Berlin. They're all at the line. Makes the first. So as soon as Utah State finds ways to get some offense going and get some buckets, they can't get a stop. And that's been the hardest thing for them defensively is getting a stop. That's four fouls now on Jared Shaw. Gets that rebound, Barone with 10 points. Seven point advantage for Idaho. Davis, here's Reed. A needed bucket by Keyshawn Reed. Down to five. Another assist by Marcel. Able to get down in the lane. A little penetration on the switch screen. You got to respect his first step. Davis now with four assists. So we approach four minutes. McQuistian penetrates. Had it knocked away. Davis comes up with it. Aggie's able to force a turnover. Can they get points? Here's Medlin. Front iron. The roof would have blew off the place if he would have thrown, you know, hit that one. Yeah, you got the feeling the spectrum's starting to get pretty loud in here. And you wonder where it's been all year. They're gonna, they're gonna call that foul on, or foul on Keyshawn. It looked like Connor Hill just ran him right over from what I saw. If that's the case, that's five on Keyshawn Reed. That's five on Keyshawn. Or excuse me, they say that's four. I'm looking at the scoreboard, it said four when that happened. Maybe they just gave it to him quick. So Reed will go off the court now. 347 remaining. It's a tight one again down the stretch. Vandals lead by five. 
Back inside, the Spectrum boy, things are certainly heated. Idaho with a five point lead. 3.47 remaining in the ball game. Have a look at this play. Yeah, watch right here. This is where it looked like Keyshawn got ran over by Hill. He's just kind of moving to the ball. And I guess they're saying the foul's on Reed because he grabbed the jersey and pulled Connor Hill down. So and that is four fouls on Keyshawn. I misspoke. Four for Keyshawn, four on Shaw. Well, Utah State back in a man-to-man. -man. We'll see, see what they do defensively. They can come up with a stop. Tough pass, Madison, though. Open look at a three, and he buries it. Boy, Idaho clutch shooting down the stretch. Well, how about Madison coming in the game? 16% from downtown. He's hit two big ones that have stopped runs here in the second half. Still time here, but Aggies have to execute on offense. Davis with the drive, gets in the lane. Shot was blocked, but then Stone comes back. A much needed two by Jordan Stone. Now with 18 second chance points to only nine of Idaho, Utah State just hasn't been able to find the outside game. They find the outside game, they're probably in good shape. Harris might have got away with one match, and oh, it is a turnover. Boy, I didn't hear the whistle. I didn't either. You know, I thought he traveled. They're going to bring Shaw back into the game and Stone go to the bench. So they get the stop. They create another turnover, the eighth on Idaho. Boy, that was a nice one by Stone. Able to clean it up. Here's Davis. Inside three to play. Reed gets it to Shaw. Shaw. You know, they go for a set, a half-court set, and they've been trying to get the ball to Shaw. Last time they went down to Keyshawn, I looked at the assistant coaches from Utah State. They're saying, hey, get the ball to the left side. We want to get it to Shaw. And you look right here. Shaw goes in, his head's ducked. Barone's pushing him away, but how's, how about his ability to go up and dock it down? Harris is going to be out of the game. That might bode well for Utah State because he's really caused problems disrupting the offense defensively. Big shots coming from Shaw, 2.39 to go. Yeah, Harris is fouled out of the ball game. White game from him. And now a big free throw coming up for Shaw. Misses. Madison. And it was taken away by McChristian. They want to travel. The official said he never had possession. Never had possession of the ball. You gotta believe Idaho's gonna work a lot of clock. Inside two and a half to play. Douglas gives up to Barone. There's Madison working on Reed. Outside in the Christian. With the mismatch, Reed's got four. You gotta believe that he's gonna try and drive on it. And Christian pulls up. Medlin with the rebound. Two minutes left. Here is Reed. He's going to attack Madison. Able to draw the foul, and he'll go to the line. The crowd urging Keyshawn to get into it. Get into it, big fella. He will now go to the line and shoot a pair. Well, I like the aggressiveness. I like the ability to get deep in the lane. He caught it in pretty good position, but he used that strength to, to back Madison down, and he got close enough where he's going to draw the foul or just throw it down in his face. Aggie shooting 89% from the charity stripe. Reed was 16. Hits the first. These are big free throws down the stretch. I mentioned about four minutes ago in this ball game that they're shooting a high percentage from the foul line. If they can continue to make these down the stretch, that's a big deal. Stone comes in for Shaw, who has four fouls. Offense to defense substitution. You know, we haven't seen Lopez here in the second half. Stone's done a nice job off the bench. Guarding Barone. They stuck with it. Big bucket. In and out. Madison with the rebound. So three two point for, game. Two for four down the stretch from the foul line, Michael. Big ones that they need. Heard making some noise. Here's Douglas on the drive. Back outside. You know, sometimes offensively, when you're trying to hold for a shot and work clock, it gets you out of your offensive rhythm. 
Sometimes you just got to play what you're used to. You see right now, a lot of miscommunication and confusion with the Vandals. Aggies need a stop here. Shot clock down to five. Madison has it on a drive. Blocked by Stone! Three seconds left on the shot clock. Boy, Stone put that one right into Barack Obama's melon. I mean, you take a look at this as Stone comes across with the left hand. You've got, you've got all the Disney princesses and President Obama right there on the front row with the student section. they got to have their hands ready to shoot the ball. Douglas to inbounds with three seconds on the shot clock. Cameron's got to force it. Misses. Medlin comes up with a rebound. Ag has a chance to tie with a three. Reed. Back to Davis. Boy, high drama here on the spectrum. As you know, you got inside a minute to play. You got plenty of time. Butterfield going to be called for the offensive foul. He's been so good with that drive. You know, it might have been the right call. Butterfield extended his right arm just a little bit. He's so strong and so physical. And this is just a tough call. Right there, kind of ducks the shoulder. Ducks the shoulder. That's a tough call. That's one that can go either way. And Coach Verlin's going to want a timeout to see if they can come up with some type of thing offensively here because their last two possessions have been tough. Tough call against Butterfield, especially under a minute to go in this one. Well, how about our... Lewis and State Bank, play of the game. Boy, take a look at this shot. Falling down, basket when they need it. And, and you take a look at Jared Shaw on Barone. You know, their premier player, Utah State's better post player, able to get that and one opportunity. So, so this is a one-point ball game if they make their free throws down the stretch. Will be Idaho possession with 55 seconds. But One more tie, close call. It's a close call. You know, he's got the right arm down there. and Hill's moving his feet. You know, and Hill might have started I think it's a real tough call against like Utah State with a minute left. Yeah, that's a tough call to make. I can see maybe first half. Second half. Maybe you let him play a little bit. It's been such a physical contest. It's a three-point Vandal lead with possession. Aggies again need a stop. Last time they forced a desperation three-point attempt by a post player from Idaho. Can they have that type of defense here on Keyshawn, this possession? Keyshawn's got four. He's got to be careful. He's on the point guard. So they're working clock. See, now you got a mismatch. you got Medlin on Madison. You wonder if they're going to try and isolate Madison on the block. There is Madison on the drive. He was losing it. Shot clock down to four. So again, Utah State's defense able to get that stop. And the Aggies will have possession with 24 seconds left. That's another big possession defensively. They have had three stops in a row, but they've only capitalized on it once. They've had opportunities. Timeout. Utah State, Butterfield gives the timeout signal. Stu was going to draw something up. Do you go for three? Do you go for a quick two? Boy, I don't know. I think with 20 seconds, if it, you take your first available shot. If you take your first available look at, at the basket, if it's a two, you take your chances. Our GNC player of the game, Jared Shaw. 12 points, 12 rebounds, a block, and then one assist. That one was a monster block. And that was a big-time bucket. Aggies certainly needed that. That's why they're in contention here, down three with 20 seconds. The nice play of uh, Jared Shaw. Yeah, he's played fantastic. I mean, you look at his stat line, I think that's one you'll take any night. Well, every time you got 12 and 12, they've got to be careful. If this goes into the overtime, it's probably going to bode well for Idaho with Utah State's bigs in foul trouble. But, you, you know, you look at what do you do? You, do you go to your shooters? You go back to that Santa Clara game where Preston Medlin couldn't buy a bucket and couldn't buy a three-pointer. It, and he hits the one to send in overtime. You wonder, you know, they're shooters. They're going to make it. Aggies just two of 13 from three-point range. Here we go. 15 seconds. Medlin. Here's Butterfield. Which more likes that he plays with confidence. Back to Medlin. Clock down to seven. Shaw's got it. Shaw needs help. 
Here's Medlin. Medlin releases on the three. And score with point four left. Preston Medlin to win it. Oh, most holy smokes. This game too good to end in regulation. Only the third made three of the game by the Aggies. And Preston Maryland, the preseason conference player of the year, showing you why with his clutch three. Boy, and I thought he could have got away with a foul. You see, if you wind that back, Barone hit his wrist. But you know, he did the same thing at Santa Clara. They needed a big bucket. They went to Preston Medlin. He wasn't having a good shooting night, and he somehow finds a way to knock it down. And how about Douglas? <laughs> Boy, that would have taken the wind out of the cells. Like, talk about popping a balloon. As soon as this stadium's about to implode. That, that would have been an absolute stunner had that one gone in. Boy, and I think he got it off in time. You, you know, the Aggies struggled getting a good look. Credit defense, or the defense for uh, Idaho. That might be the spark that the Aggies need going here into overtime. I mean, that was an unbelievable shot by Medlin. You know, the I, team obviously had to have it. The game was on the line. And, and I just got done talking about you. You talk about Utah State here going into this this, this game. I said, if, I, if it goes overtime, it's going to bode well for Idaho because Utah State's bigs are in foul trouble. Watch the screen by Shaw. And then Barone, little knock on the hands. Preston knocks it down. Wow. What a play. What a play. When you need it. You just go get it, and that's what ball players do. <laughs> the tongue hanging out there by Preston Medlin. What a game. Tied again as we head to overtime. You say Idaho, perhaps they have the advantage because Shaw and Reed both have four fouls. Their guy, Harris, is already fouled out of the game, speaking of Idaho. But the bigs are in trouble. Well, Madison's, trouble -wise Madison's got State. four. And Barone's only got one. I don't know how Barone has one foul. That's disciplined defensive play right there. I mean, he, as physical as it's been, and he's their center and only comes away with one foul. And that one foul he had was when Shaw kind of got the little hook shot. We got that play of the game that we showed you earlier. So, been tough. Tough sled. Our next Aggie telecast will be Friday against San Jose State right here on KMYU. So, will it be as good as this one? We hope so. Well, the coaches always want to blow out. They don't like these close contested games. Well, when you talk about travel partners in the WAC, and, and, and you, talk, you talk about Utah State, their travel partner San Jose, which the time Coach Moy says, I don't know how that happens, but it goes well for us because when they go on a road trip, they got to fly to San Jose, get on a plane, fly to Salt Lake City, get on a bus, drive an hour and a half, and, and uh, play in Logan, where most travel partners are at least in the same state where you can just jump on a bus and, and get to your to your next destination that same night. A wild environment here on the spectrum. You ready to jump around? Trying to take a page out of Wisconsin football's book. Han Solo in the house. Okay, we're ready to play the extra session. Aggies battling back to force overtime. It's interesting to see him jumping on the opposite sides that you're used to. Controlled by McChristian, but Medlin just takes it. Quickly up to Butterfield. Butterfield. Here's Shaw. Too strong. Madison comes up with it. Butterfield is in great position for the rebound. Mistimed it off the rim. Jumped too early. Douglas locks it up. Remember that stat? You know, the Aggies have owned almost every st statistical category but three-point shooting. There's McChristian. Misses on the three. It'll stay with Idaho. That's 69. Trying to get to that 70 mark where they've been so good this season when they score 70 or more. You know, they held them to 70 in regulation. Have to give you a little research on that. There's Madison, back outside. Good straight up D from Keyshawn with four fouls. He's got to be careful. Inside to Habib. Well, Shai came over, tried to send that to row two, but able to score the first points in overtime in Idaho. Now with 71. Where will the Aggies go for offense? There's Davis, gives it to Medlin. 
Back to Davis. Pull up jumper, and it's good. Tied again at 71. Marcel back with 13 again. That's a great look. Good penetration coming from Preston Midland. You penetrate that defense, you kick out for open shut jump shooters. A little ball fake coming from Marcel. Marone on Shaw, and Shaw has fouled out of the ball game. I thought that was great defense coming from Shaw. The thing that he got called on the foul is he brought his hand down. All he had to do is stay straight up. As soon as he brought his right hand down to try and block the ball or grab the ball out of Barone's hand, that did it. And he standing straight up, forced Barone to shoot over him like we saw with George Stone earlier. He probably doesn't get that foul. Stone comes back into the ball game. And a big bucket and a block. See if we get some good minutes out of Jordan Stone down the stretch. Defensively, he's played pretty good. Dances on the rim and goes out. Just noticing Mr. Beans down there. They've got a plethora. Barone, four of eight from the line. Five of nine, five of nine in now Idaho. You, you know, you lose a lot of offense when you bring Jordan in compared to Jared Shaw. But you gotta credit what Stone's done today by stepping up to the challenge. You know, being ready to play. Rowan's free throw gives Idaho a one-point lead. There's Marcel Davis, the freshman from American Fork. Played so well. Butterfield on the drive. Back outside to Medlin. Medlin with a spin move. And the finish. Preston Medlin has given the Aggies the lead. Over-aggressive defensively sometimes can hurt you. You try to take away middle again. Every time they've tried to take Preston Medlin away or Butterfield middle, they've turned back and gone baseline and got a bucket. Medlin is fired up. Here's Douglas on the drive. He lost it. Medlin might have got a piece of that one. Davis. Approaching two and a half to play in overtime. Davis is so savvy and heads up with the ball. Smart decision not to force a bad shot. Nothing was there. Reed. Air mails it. Oh, no. It was deflected. It's going to stay with Utah State. So the official comes in and says, no, Vandal's got a piece of it. Deflecting it high out of bounds. The assistant coaches are wanting the foul. Assistant coaches for Idaho are saying, what? I didn't see the ball get deflected. But no, that ball wasn't touched. But probably, was, if anything, there's a blocking foul. Aggie basketball, 19 on the shot clock. One point, Aggie lead, Butterfield. Goes up to Medlin. What a three he hit to send it to overtime. Butterfield. Front iron stone with the offensive rebound. And Butterfield somehow comes up with this. A new clock. Medlin says, I'll take the three. A clutch shot coming from Medlin. Aggies up four. Michael, 21 second chance points for Utah State. And that'll do it for you. Credit Butterfield. Stu Morrill told us earlier this week, if you don't get a body on him, he'll box you out. Or if you don't box him out, he'll hurt you. If you don't box him out, he'll hurt you. He called him a mix between Brian Green and Tyler Newbold, a tremendous rebounding three guard. In fact, they used to tell him to get back on D. Said, no need. <laughs> don't, just don't even tell him to get back on D. Tell him to go get a rebound. His instincts are to charge and get that rebound. And it pays off as Medlin hits another three. What a quiet 18 points for Preston Medlin. And he's hit the threes when they matter. Boy, take a look at that. So you give a shooter, you walk into a gym and you go up to a shooter, somebody like Preston Metzler or Connor Hill for Idaho, say, where do you want to shoot the ball? They're probably going to tell you head on. That's the highest percentage three-pointer in the gym. You can't allow them defensively to take that shot. They're going to hit it. We've seen it. I am just so impressed with Medlin not shooting a good percentage. Five of 14. The question but is, when it's mattered, he has made them now three of eight from downtown. The one, the game was on the line in the corner to send it to overtime. And this one is giving Utah State a four point lead inside two minutes to play in the OT. But, well, if you if you go back to this tape, Coach Berlin's going to go look at this and say, that ball should, that basket should never happen because the ball never touched anybody going out of bounds. But how about the penetration? I've talked about it all night. Penetration, kick out to shooters. You see him trying to play high side as McChristian. 
and Spencer, or excuse me, Preston Medlin just puts a tremendous spin move and takes it to the lane. Five points in the overtime. Big five points. Well, he has been fantastic. You see what he's done tonight. 18 and four. Only shooting 36%, but the good ones make them when they count. Here we go. Utah State trying to get another stop on defense. Habib in trouble, gets it to Madison. Keyshawn's got to be careful of four, and you wonder if they're going to take advantage of that. See if they can get dry, uh, Madison driving. Shaw's already fouled out. He fell out early in overtime. That three way off the mark. Reed had perfect blackout positioning. It's not the shot that Coach Berlin wanted. One of your guys that hasn't hit any shots or not one of your better shooters. Shooting a contested three-pointer that didn't even draw iron. Medlin fouled. Habib reaching in. And this is where I think it all kind of started with Medlin. He wasn't hitting anything from the perimeter, but that fouled and made shots at the charity strike. Trying to add to that, he's five of six at the line. He's been to the line quite a bit tonight. Good on the first. As McPherson will come in for Douglas. Those will be a dog fight. <laughs> this is a game that started from the opening tip. You, you know you've got a good game when you're tied up at half. <laughs> Evenly matched. Oh, and you're tied up at the end of regulation. Let's not, let's not uh, take that away from anything. Just an evenly matched ball game. Utah State, they've won 30 of the last 35 in this series. As Brown gets a quick two with 106. And Coach Berlin calls for time, wants to talk things over. Well, Utah State's lucky they didn't get the fifth foul on Keyshawn Reed right there because he got away with one. He took both forearms and threw them right into Barone as he shot that layup. Watch right here as you'll see uh, Habib come into the screen. See Keyshawn, little touch? Didn't look so much there, but watching from our angle, you can see he definitely knocked him off balance. This might show it a little better. You see as Habib dishes off to Barone, Keyshawn kind of knocks him off balance a little. Looked a little stronger in person. The Barone there guy, four of nine shooting, 13 points. So he hasn't shot very well, but he's managed to produce, especially here in the second half for Coach Berlin. But this has been a great one. Close throughout. The score has been tied, I think, 18 times. Wow, what's Ten different lead changes. Let's go through these lines. Coach Berlin right now is thinking, I had you. I had you on the ropes. Let's see if I can close something out. Kind of bag of tricks we have. They're going to put out a lot of pressure. It's only a four-point game, two-possession ball game. Berlin is two and six against Stu. Got to get it across the timeline. A whistle on the foul. Never beaten Stu here in the spectrum. Two wins have come in the uh, Cowan spectrum for Donna Berlin. So Stu looking to improve his mark against his good friend. Don Berlin is meddling again at the line. Just hit two moments ago. Credit to Idaho the way they played on the road. I mean, they played on the road. They opened up three straight conference games on the road. 15 of the 18, so now 16 of 19 have come after the break. Yeah, just been fantastic in the second half. I mean, starting from about the, the last 30 seconds of the game. But this is their fourth straight road game, speaking of Idaho. Fourth straight. Dave is going to be called for the foul. I don't know how Marcel got that foul. He was falling down and tried to make up for himself. And reached out with his right hand. But that puts them at the foul line to close the gap. See if we can get a look. Boy. Tough one on Davis says McChristian at the line. Last time Idaho won three conference road games to start the year was back in 1963 as McChristian hits the first. Well, I mentioned McChristian was shooting from the free throw line 64%. One of two as Menlin comes up with the rebound. And we fouled again. This time by Habib. So, again, a chance to add to his total. Speaking of Preston, 
And Habib is fouled out of the ball game. Yeah, Coach Furlan's not happy with, with, or with Habib right now. He told him not to foul, not to foul, but take a look at this. Talk about owning the offensive rebounds. Plus 10, second chance points. Utah State has 21 offensive rebounds. Medlin misses again his third miss from the line. That free throw percentage has been so high there in the 90s for most of the game in the high 80s. Sat at 89% for quite a while. Down the stretch here. Dropping down to 80%. And this ball from Clifford with the rebound. Another offensive rebound, Michael. If you want to win games, you got to get the boards. Especially when you don't shoot a very good percentage. And then when again foul, let's see if he can knock these two down. I'm uh, surprised that Idaho took that long to foul. It's almost like they've lost any type of gumption to go out and win this ball game. It's only a four-point game. Two possessions. You hit a three and they force them to miss free throws, which they've been doing the last three shots. Edwin makes the first. There's an assistant to Stewart, four years at Colorado State, then 11 years here in Logan. Watch the early offense. They're going to shift the push. They're going to look to push. Coach Burrow wanted them to push fast. Madison for three. Too strong. Davis with the rebound. There's McChristian and Madison both there to quickly stop the clock and foul Davis. Well, the possession arrow is going to go to Utah State. It had a bit, a jump ball. You know, Madison's shot the ball really well today. Yeah, he's done a pretty good job. He's got 14 points. It seemed like they were in too big of a hurry. I mentioned they were looking to push. You can see Coach Verlin give him the signal. Let's push. And you got to take the first available shot. But it's almost like he didn't have time to set his feet really long on that one. Nice good on the first. He tossed it. Now shooting 76% from the line. One of two. So the door is slightly open here for the Vandals if they can hit a couple of perimeter shots. Well, it's still a two possession game and you've got over 20 seconds. Hill, the Christian with a back tap. Out of bounds. It'll be Utah State ball. You know, McChristian didn't know where he was on the floor. All he had to do was grab the rebound, not tip it out of bounds. I think he was looking for Douglas and Douglas kind of came in instead of staying out. So Aggie with possession and now Butterfield. He'll have a turn at the line. Let's see if he can, he can knock these down. Two of two tonight. They've shot so well from the foul line for the three quarters of this ball game. For the last seven minutes, they've really struggled. And he misses. This should be about a 12 point game. They make the free throws. They're being interesting down the stretch. Been a wild night. One of two for Butterfield. Douglas looking for a quick two. Doesn't get it. Melvin another rebound. And Idaho will drop back. Wow, what a game. The Aggies will win and improve to 4-0 in conference play. Idaho, their first conference loss of the season. And of course, the three-game homestand continues on Friday. We'll have that game for you against San Jose State, an improved Spartan team. Aggies winning in overtime, 82-75.